one, the man that's in church praising his praising God and showing up still may be the thug on the street. <laughs> First of all. You say don't get it twisted. Don't get that twisted. That's Let true. me clear that up. But I think when you know better, you do better. And I think even for myself, growing up on the east side of Detroit, um, growing up in an environment where it was thumbed out for lack of a better word, hood, um, and you date who you are around. Um, and there's a certain um, gratification in the unknown. Uh, uh, someone that brings a thrill. Mm. But not realizing how toxic that really is because what's, what's, what good is a thrill that doesn't produce a positive outcome? So again, it's connected to Am I who I say I am as a Christian woman, for real, first of all, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and what is it about me that I can't be attracted to just a man that finds me beautiful or finds me attractive or who's willing to demonstrate that in my life, And but I would see him as boring. Um, I would see him as not the one because I'm still seeking or after. He's, or he's too into you. Or he's I've heard too that. nice, that, that, which is, is crazy. What is that? But because we're looking to feed our impulses and maybe the lustful side of us uh, as to why that's more attractive. And even me, I'll say now, well, I need somebody a little hard because of where I come from. Uh -huh. But I'm realizing also, because I you have to talk to yourself, because who you were will always creep up. You know, saved, sanctified, sold out. Uh, but you still have to balance that out. So I'll have to say, well, why do I, what is it about him that I'm attracted to? And it, there's been no substance. In opposed to the one who is sending me a card or... You know, so once you really and truly love yourself, then you will elevate in your thinking as yeah. to what you deserve. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of that, though, we see a lot of women in church who, um, they don't necessarily want the bad boy, but they want the man with all this, these check, I mean, the checklist is in, it's got to be this, he being, he don't speak in tongues, he don't do, <laughs> it's like, let the, let the man just, it, just meet the man and see if he like you first. Right. Before you start going through, through the checklist. Oh, oh my God. What? Well, you, you, I know. I know. <laughs> I had a checklist. Okay. And that was because you're not, you don't really know what you need because you really yet don't know who you are. And so in my checklist, if I'm educated, he got to be educated. If I make 50000 he got to make. Thinking that that is what builds the relationship and it's not. It's really compatibility. It's really can you serve that person and can they serve you? And it fits the way God intended. But we have our list because we are superficial people. And we, we're image driven. How dare I make six figures and he work at the gas station? Mm. Because we care about what other people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so that's just really it. How can I get with him and I'm who I am? That ain't good for your image. My <laughs> image. I can't walk in here with the man that cleaned Kroger's floor. Because mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Reason. Yeah. But that's what led me to, I was married. And my ex-husband was a minister in the church. Master's degree in uh, counseling. Uh, we both were highly educated, believed in education, could talk well, speak well, could do things externally together. But could, could we connect personally, spiritually, intimately? And there was a big disconnect. Yeah, yeah. And so that list for me went out the window, but it was through my experience. Can someone connect to my heart? And can I connect to someone's heart? And I think it takes time to know that. But as we get older as women, we like, hurry up. So yeah. this list seemed to fit. <laughs> Yet... That's because I've done not a, a whole um, self-assessment of who I am, first of all, and can I give what I say I want?